So I'm starting a new series. I'm calling it my whiteboard talks. So we're going to cover a lot of different information on a whiteboard as well as kind of today going to be showing you some exercises. Uh, I'm going to kind of follow along a little series. Here I'm going to break down each one of these exercises. So I got this question as some of my friends and people know that I've been dealing with a little bit of patellar tendonitis issues. I personally have not got to the bottom of the issue, like what is truly causing it. I actually probably need to seek out people who know more than myself. So I got approached about it. Somebody I know was saying, hey man, I know you've been dealing with it. What have you done to help? Uh, first couple of things has been rest has been number one. I don't have this up here, but resting. I've pretty much eliminated a lot of my squat movements for a couple months and was trying to just feel things out, seeing what caused my knee pain and what didn't and avoiding anything that did. Um, number two was, and some people go back and forth on this, when I was having pretty acute pain, I iced it a little bit. It helped me. Um, some people go back and forth on the icing thing now and the icing is bad. I've also done some compression with the floss bands. So trying some of that hasn't been a big help. These I think are the ones that have helped me more. So first one being quad smashing. So this is probably an order of the things that have helped me the most to the least and those other ones were kind of down here that I didn't even talk about. Um, up here, but quad smashing. Uh, got a lot of this idea is you know trying to foam roll, but instead we're going to show you the quad smashing that I do, typically with a barbell or kettlebell, and what to feel when you're doing that, and some of the how long am I doing it and whatnot. Second thing that's helped me the most, and I feel have helped me the most, is TKEs or terminal knee extensions. So we're going to talk about getting you a band that will help you with those. The third part is the couch stretch or a little bit of a variation that I do with it. You can make this, it's really not a variation that you can do it in many different ways, but I'm going to show you the one that I do in the gym that's easiest for me to set up and do and that I personally enjoy the most so that I do it more often. Um, so those are my main three, as you can see I put a little line here, but after that um, the bottom two are probably two that I've also used and one is calf stretches, so some different calf stretching uh, to help just from being super tight down the calves, as well as an exercise called a Peterson step up. Uh, this is something I've seen. I've used it a little bit. I may not be 100% correct on it, to be honest, but I do it. I think it helps a little bit. Obviously, more important up top, a lot less limited here down at the bottom. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. If you do use them, please give me feedback. Let me know what you think. If you're noticing any differences, things that you may know that I may not, that may help you out. And like I said, this is not going to be a cure all end all to this, you probably need to get to the bottom issues which I personally need to do myself. So the first thing I do for helping my patellar tendonitis is I do some quad smashing. And you can use anything to do this. I prefer the barbell. You can use uh, Donnie Thompson's ex-wife. You can use a kettlebell. Anything heavy, you can use a friend that will smash out these quads. We want to try to break up some adhesion in there and some muscles that are just constantly firing, constantly jacked up tight. So what I'm going to do is just slowly roll this bar down my quads. The furthest down I want to go is to right when it sits right above the kneecaps and then find a little groove that it kind of sits in. And I'll kind of let it sit here for a little bit and I'll work my way back up. Anytime that I find a spot that's super tender and I'll find that my quads start to fire, I try to relax. So I can see, if you can see that in the video right there, I just found a spot that I, was, I tighten up because it hurts. It's not going to be, it's not going to feel good. It's not going to be fun. And you find these spots and you, you feel yourself tensing up and then I try to force myself to relax. And I'll work back and forth through here. I personally actually normally add weight on the bar so you can put some 10 pound plates on here depending on how big your legs are, maybe fives, and just sliding those on and rolling them up and down uh, to help break that up. This has probably been the thing that's helped me the absolute most. Another variation of this that I'll do is I'll shift to one side and I'll just use this side of the bar up and down one quad. And from here, I can also put some weight on this end of the bar, help push that down some more. I also, and this is not anything scientific, I tend to try to let this quad relax. I'll put my off foot underneath and I can kind of roll to the side a little bit and maybe hit that IP band just a little bit, but really hitting this VL, this vastus lateralis, the outer part of your quad, is where I personally tend to get a lot of the tightness and adhesions, especially down on this end of my knee um, or this side of my leg. So work on that. That's the first one. That's personally giving me the most help. Now there's other things I'll do with this as well, so it could be a combo of all of them, but I think that if I just do this alone, it would probably help me the most. So that's the end of the quad smashing. We'll move on to the next part. The second exercise I'm showing you here is called the terminal knee extension or the TKE. You can do this with a setup with a band, and you can use different strength bands depending on how you're doing them. Right now I've got set up a light band, and what I'm going to do is work one leg at a time, pick my heel up and then I'm going to drive my leg as straight as possible, almost thinking about hyper extending that knee. 
This is good for a lot of knee tracking issues as well as getting that quad activated, um, especially working the VMO or the vastus medius oblique, which is the teardrop part of your quad. So this helps with that knee tracking if you're having a lagging VMO. And you can just go up and back and you can do lots of reps with a lighter band or something else I like doing is using a lot stronger band and you can push back and hold for like a three sec a second contraction and then coming back up. You can also do both legs and just work really both knees tracking at the same time, but one has that band on it. So you want it right in the back of the knee, driving that leg back as hard as you can. And you can also add another variation of this by adding a hip circle around both knees. It's going to work your abductors and keeping those knees apart and also work that knee tracking. So mix this up. I do tons and tons of reps with this one. Um, mixed in a lot of different workouts and almost in, at the beginning of every workout now to help with my knees. It's not much to get a band. We're going to go, I'm going to have another video where it goes over the different bands and what I use them for. But one of these bands you can pick up at a lot of different websites um, for not too much money and for what you can do with it, it's well worth every penny. What I've got going on here is a variation of the couch stretch. It's really not a variation, but it is the stretch. What I like to use is a 90 degree or an incline type bench. It's going to be on a slight incline. Get my foot up here and knee down in the corner of the bench, and I'm going to work on true hip extension here. So I'm going to keep my ribs down, squeeze in my butt cheek, and you'll feel this pull through that quad. If you're tight, I'm sure you'll probably end up bent over like this. You'll be like, oh wow, this is really tough. This really hurts. It's because you're that tight through that quad if you're maintaining good posture. So don't get super arched and really pressing into it, try to do all this. Keep your good posture while you're doing this. You can add some variations, as, and that is reaching upwards, trying to get into that psoas, those hip flexors some more. You can rotate a little bit to feel it a little differently in this quad. Some individuals, this might be a little too much, this height, I could easily step down, lower that bench, have them go right to this again. So what we're going to be able to do is stretch those quads in hip extension while in knee flexion. So it's a really good stretch to really lengthen those quads. It's something that you can do so simple, and this is my favorite variation of it, because with this bench, I can easily be accountable to do this. If I'm in the gym, I can hit this in between sets of bench, even when it's not a lower body day, just to constantly be stretching on my quads. I don't have to get on the ground. I don't have to set anything else up. I can just grab a bench and I can go. So this is my favorite variation of this, or has become my favorite variation of this. So I hope you pair this one with the previous two, as that's what's helped me the most. I hope you can figure out with parts four and five as well, maybe where you need more work and you can tell by what you feel like is giving you the most results. So keep trying the different variations and different exercises and maybe combinations of them on different days and see what you can figure out that works best for you. If you have any questions, comments, anything that you may know that I may not, please let me know and we'll try to put them in this and maybe extend the series. So, so the next part of this video, all you're gonna get is a look at my feet. Yay, you're so exciting but I can't really figure out how to get my head and face in this, fake in this video myself. So what we're gonna do here is a version of a calf stretch. Very simple. Um, most people have probably kicked their foot up on a curve and kind of stretched out their calves a lot of times before or run before. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add this band back here to the bottom, right at the base of the ankle. It's gonna be pulling me backwards to help load that joint a little differently. Put my foot up on a small box, a plate, a bumper plate, anything to get that calf into stretching. And now I'm gonna squeeze my butt and pushing my hip forward, gonna feel that stretch down that calf. Another variation that I can do with this one is also bending my knee and pushing my knee forward. I'm gonna feel it maybe down in the Achilles a little bit different. So the calves can help just bring the tightness in the feet and the ankles and the calves are so important to keep loose. So try to get this stretch in. Even without a band, you can do the same thing. You can work your knee in towards the outside of your foot or towards the end of your foot. You can kind of turn your hips a little bit. Just try to get those calves stretched out. Like I said, this is not one of the most important videos I've done, but this is one of the ones that I think also will help you depending on how tight your calves are. So for my last video of this series, you get to also just stare at my feet. I know it's super exciting, but I want you to really see it instead of me just trying to explain it. So what we're gonna do here is the Peterson step up. And I like to use a very small box or a plate, and I'm gonna use, the, I have it set up here with the uh, line in my platform just to give me a line that I can work with. So what I'm gonna do is set my toe on the box on my right foot, right at the uh, edge of that line. I'm gonna stand up on the box. I'm gonna keep my left toe up as well. That's this foot that's moving here. And what I'm gonna do as I come down is I'm gonna just touch my left heel in front of that line, and on the side, my right foot will be picking up the heel and then driving back. Very similar to the TKE, but I want to do this very under control. And right now I'm watching the video and trying to do this myself. It's not right. But what I'm going to do here is lower down, come back up. And barely touching my left leg here on the ground, 
but instead trying to keep all the load in my right leg and keeping very controlled. As you get better at this movement, you can then, I'm going to move to the front here, you can then start adding a little bit of weight, maybe some dumbbells in your hands, a small bar on your back, and just trying to increase the strength in this little bit of range of motion movement. This is something you don't want to load super heavy because you don't want to put all that pressure here in the knee. When I'm doing that, I'll move to the other side, I'll do my other knee. So you can do both, even if only one knee's bothering you, it doesn't, it's not going to hurt to work both. So I hope these help you. If you do have any questions on these, please let me know. Thank you for giving me the questions, comments, suggestions so far. I love trying to give back to what people really want to know. So please let me know what you want to know, and I can try to help you as best I can to my knowledge. Thanks, everybody, for staying with me this far through this video. I know it's probably a little bit boring and took a while, but I really want to make sure I had everything explained as best possible. So thank you for the support. And if you can, go to Blatnik Strength and Conditioning on Facebook. Like our page there. Check out BlatnikStrength.com. Maybe sign up for our newsletter. Always pumping out good content. Always trying to get more information out. So thanks, everybody, for being fans, and I hope you enjoy it.